When choosing the path of a criminal, you have to undertake many different and dangerous activities at every step. And although the overriding goals in every piece of work are to maximize profits and minimize risk, unfortunately, in many cases, these two things do not go hand in hand. Usually, you have to get your hands dirty to achieve real success in the criminal underworld. However, in some situations, you can show great cunning while outsmarting rivals who are constantly waiting for your mistake. Today in this episode, we will talk about the Balas from GTA 5 and show why they are undoubtedly the best example of a gang that knows how to cleverly gain an advantage. Welcome to the Gaming Investigators channel, and let's get with today's topic. Before we move on to the main part of the episode, we will start with the information that can be found about the gang while traversing the broadly understood world of the game. Unfortunately, we do not know when the gang was founded, or at least we have not been able to find any specific date on this topic. In addition, Balas, just like families, decided to choose their logo based on the sports teams they are fans of. Therefore, the logo of the Balas is based on Los Santos Panic Basketball and the Boers Baseball Club. Very often, we can find the logo of one of these teams on the clothes worn by the Purples. Regarding the territories, Balas control a large part of the Davis district, excluding in this case the southern part since it's owned by Davis neighborhood families. Another aspect worth mentioning is the gang members. Unfortunately, we do not know too many of them, but we managed, so to speak, to locate them by surfing the internet in GTA 5. The first Bala is Darnell Stevens, who is mentioned in the Grove Street family's episode in GTA 5. As a reminder, the man posted an entry on the Feud Baseball Team website where he made fun of the families who lost Grove Street. The other two Balas about whom we will tell you also commented on the same website. Currently, you can see their entries on the screen. We have Adric Howard from Original Covenant Balas and Regis Welsh from an unknown set. Moving on, let's discuss the similarities and differences between the Balas from GTA San Andreas and the Balas from GTA 5. What we have to say right away in terms of differences are sets. As you probably remember from the episode about Grove Street families in GTA 5, the number of Greens factions in GTA San Andreas and GTA 5 was different, and the same is the case with the Balas. While in GTA San Andreas, the Balas consisted of four groups, namely Front Yard Balas, Roland Heights Balas, Kilo Tray Balas, and Temple Drive Balas, in GTA 5, they're divided into three sets. Original Covenant Balas, East Side Balas, and South Rancho Balas. The first set, Original Covenant Balas, seems to dominate the entire organization. It controls the western part of the Davis District, where the greatest activity can be found at Grove Street and Covenant Avenue. The East Side Balas, in turn, control the eastern part of Davis, and they are most often found in the areas of Brogue Avenue and Davis Avenue. As for the South Rancho Balas, it is difficult to clearly define what areas they have, because the Rancho District is controlled mostly by Vagos, and in some places, there are also Aztecas. The very name of the set was adopted conventionally among players due to community reports that, allegedly near the southern part of the Rancho District, you can meet some Balas wearing t-shirts with the word Rancho. So we took a closer look at it, and we have to admit that it was not that easy to find a gang member with a t-shirt like that. But in the end, it happened. However, the problem is that such members could be found in the area belonging to original Covenant Balas, which is in the vicinity of the southern part of the Rancho District. In our opinion, there are several possible interpretations to be drawn from this. The first one is that South Rancho Balas are simply selected members of the original Covenant Balas set to take part in the gang wars with original Los Santos Vagos over the southern part of Rancho. Perhaps the Balas have been planning to conquer this area for some time, but preparations are still underway. Furthermore, it is completely natural that soldiers will be sent from the original Covenant Balas grounds since they are closest to South Rancho. Alternatively, help will be provided by more experienced members from other sets. On the other hand, another possible scenario may be that South Rancho Balas is a faction that ceased to exist and once controlled the southern part of Rancho, but may have lost it to Vagos, who have gained tremendous power in Los Santos. Let us know what you think about it, because here we can certainly draw several conclusions. 
Either way, the next, and to be honest, the last difference, is the extent of the territories. While in GTA San Andreas, the Ballas were having great power, and the range of their territory stretched to the southern part of the city, plus the gang also had a lot of influence in the very center. The Ballas in GTA 5 does not seem to be strong compared to how much of the entire Los Santos from GTA 5 they have under control. To be completely honest, we would even say that their areas are very small, which could also be said of the Greens territories. Perhaps the correct conclusion is that local law enforcement has decreased Los Santos gangs to a big extent, or perhaps the gang's way of doing things changed. Perhaps now they are more in hiding and try to keep a low profile in opposition to the Balas from Los Santos from 1992. As for the similarities, apart from the obvious things, like the same name, we managed to find one more, namely a very similar structure of influence. The point is that both Ballas from GTA San Andreas and Ballas from GTA 5 have territories located in greater densities. They might do it following the strength in numbers saying. And thanks to the fact that they are located close to each other, the whole gang can simply function better. The individual sets are close to each other, which favors better communication between the factions. In the end, we left the icing on the cake of this video, which is the deal between Stretch and Balas. Overall, we have five missions directly related to this event in the GTA 5 storyline. And these are Chop, The Long Stretch, Hood Safari, Lamar Down, and The Third Way. We will try to briefly introduce you to everything that happened in these missions. Two things were undoubtedly the flashpoint of the story, Stretch's imprisonment and the kidnapping of one of the OG Ballas, nicknamed D. When it comes to the issue of Harold Joseph, aka Stretch, there are no indications in the game as to how the man was arrested, or even for what. However, we can guess that it may have been some sort of crime on behalf of the families. On the other hand, the kidnapping of Gangster D takes place during the mission CHOP. Franklin's friend Lamar Davis comes up with the crazy idea of making quick money. The man plans to kidnap D to demand a ransom of $40,000 from the Ballas. What's more, the gang will only have two days to make the payment, otherwise the man will die. There are some complications, but eventually the OG is caught. Unfortunately, Lamar did not enjoy this moment for too long, as he began to make serious mistakes that put Lamar and Franklin's lives in great danger. You calling them on a cell phone, you dumb motherfucker? They gonna trace this shit in a sec. We want 40,000. Pay me or pay the funeral director, motherfucker. What the fuck you done done? You just gave them our location. Now we gotta let this motherfucker out of here. For this reason, the bitten by dog gangster was eventually released. After some time, Stretch is released from Bolingbroke Penitentiary. Lamar, in turn, receives a proposition of a drug deal from D as part of a kind of reconciliation. Besides, Lamar meets Stretch after so many years and decides to take Stretch with him and Franklin to the meeting. However, as many of you might guess, it was a trap set by the Ballas. In the end, quite a stir quickly ensued and Stretch shot the Bala OG on an impulse. The men somehow managed to break through the enemy forces and lost the police, but due to this unfortunate coincidence, Franklin became suspicious of Stretch. In the following days, Franklin, Lamar, and Trevor drive with Chop to Grove Street, this time to meet a dealer arranged by Stretch to obtain a kilo of cocaine. Fortunately, thanks to Trevor's intervention during the transaction, it turns out that there is only an ounce of goods inside instead of the agreed amount. How about a taste? No, man, we leave it. I want a taste of the other side of the brick. Now you heard what your boy said, you're leaving. Hey. Give me the... Give me the... Back. Whoa. What the fuck? Did we ask for a key or a fucking ounce? Man, that's motherfucking drywall. Hey, we got some motherfucking bars remorse. Therefore, a large shootout with the ballas ensues, which ultimately ends successfully for a group of friends. After this incident, Franklin no longer has any doubts and is even convinced that Stretch is the traitor. Unfortunately, Lamar does not believe it and ignores his friend's words. The climax was the Lamar down and the third way quests. Stretch seems to have set Lamar up against the Ballas once again, which turned out to be another trap. The matter is much more serious, however, since a lot of the Ballas have Lamar in their grip, 
and Franklin has to save him from oppression with the help of Michael and Trevor. Interestingly, the abandoned sawmill in Paletto Bay, where Lamar is being held, belongs to the Balas and is a front for the drug activity, namely the production and distribution of marijuana, as we learned from Lester. So what is say? Huh, uh, this must be it. Uh, there are older reports of a weed operation being run by an African-American gang. Uh, the files got buried, so I'm guessing they paid off the cops. They growing weed up there? Growing it in the hills, most likely, but they might be packing and shipping it out of this sawmill. I'd expect a fair few of them up there. Shit, and I'ma need some help. And in terms of the third way mission, Stretch is murdered by Michael in order not to try to connect the murder of a street gangster with Franklin. Considering the Hood Safari and Lamar Down missions, it is clear that Stretch betrayed the families while being in prison. Probably, the man established some relationship with the Balas. Shortly after the scandal with the kidnapping of Gangster D, he received an offer he could not refuse. In short, he has permission to kill D and take his place as the new OG of the gang. But there are a few conditions. The man has to set up ambushes that will lead to the capture and, above all, the death of Lamar Davis because it was he who came out with the initiative to kidnap one of the OGs for ransom. Besides, probably Stretch had to be a snitch of the Balas in the families and persuade individual sets, or more important members, to make peace with the Balas, in quotation marks, although it was about obeying them. What were the other reasons that made Stretch able to safely kill D? Presumably, the Balas were not satisfied with D as the OG of the gang. Perhaps he was a liability to them, or stopped being as useful as he used to be. Anyway, the Balas couldn't kill the OG of their gang because it would not look very good in the eyes of the gang's soldiers. That's why Stretch was ordered to do so. Moreover, if we don't know if more OGs of the families have not joined the Ballas' side in this way, eventually, after taking over Grove Street and the disappearance of this set from the map, the Greens became even more weakened. So, the Ballas could offer some of their members a bit unusual way to avoid the theoretically inevitable death. Let us know if you have any other insights on this topic. To sum up today's episode, the deal between Stretch and the Balas is one of the more interesting ways to start gaining influence with little effort. Encouraging the OGs of other gangs to join their side seems to be a very effective method. Especially when the faction of a member of such a gang is not doing very well and its existence is strongly threatened. As we can see, Balas approached the subject differently. They were not in a hurry to kill every member of the hostile gang. Instead, they came up with a brilliant idea of giving their enemies a second chance, forcing them to betray their gang. Plus, criminals from enemy gangs who ended up in jail were ideal targets. Prison seems to be the best place for this type of practice since it is a much more intimate place where you know what is going on if you only have the right connections there. If Balas would go further on this path, we think they would go far in terms of taking over more territories and influence in Los Santos. If you liked this episode, we recommend you to watch our episode about Grove Street families from GTA 5, where we discuss the issue of why they are not present during the plot in GTA 5. In the meantime, thanks for watching and see you soon!